Uh, television serials have contributed to our cultural and intellectual development. One of them posed the great question of our age, who shot J.R.? There were many number of suspects who had good reasons to pot him. It's uh, his extreme unpleasantness that's made him hypnotically appealing to large numbers of people. On Australian TV, Patricia from Sons and Daughters almost makes JR appear benevolent by comparison. Her fans know her as Pat the Rat or the Lacquered Tarantula. In real life, she's much more pleasant than that. Rowena Wallace. What's the worst yeah. reaction you've had to Pat the Rat? I've only had one really bad reaction, and I didn't get it personally, actually. Uh -huh. It was down in Melbourne when we were filming OBs down there, and we were working at a truck depot, and uh, the crew and the rest of the cast were there very early in the morning, but I had a late call, and I arrived about 11 o'clock, and they said, oh, thank goodness you didn't come any earlier. I said, why? They said, there was this truck driver who came by and said, is that Patricia Hamilton here? <laughs> and they said, well, actually, no. Well, good for her, because if she was, I'd smash her face in. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. A real fan. And off he drove. <laughs> but it must be, of course... Nice man. It must be great fun to play a strong part like that. It is. Yeah. It's a challenge, and it, it's meaty. It gives you something to work with. And you can get away with all sorts of things. Well, like smoking. Like smoking and <laughs> drinking, all of that. All yes, of that she stuff. never stops. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. And I suppose uh, there's a great change from the, from the ordinary run-the-mill roles that uh, an actress gets offered. Well, it, it was for me, because yeah. I've, I've spent many years of my 17 professional years in the business playing understanding destroyed wives and uh, <laughs> the jealous girlfriend and then, then another understanding mother and then another defeated mother and then another mother who accepts it all and then another mother. And so it went on. Uh, one played out the clichés of these types of roles, and it got to the stage where you thought, oh, no, not another one. What do I do with it? What do I do with it? Mm. So when the time came that I began to be offered these, these sort of roles, I was thrilled. Mm. Going back to those early days, you started in, in your first sort of big break, in a sense, was in Brisbane on television, wasn't it? What did, what did you do there? What, what was your job at the station? I did many things. I was a Jill of all trades and, and master of absolutely nothing. I joined Channel 7 in Brisbane as... Um, Initially, as a straight girl on a show called Theatre Royal, which was transferred from the actual Theatre Royal in Brisbane to television, and they called it Theatre Royal, and it went live to air on a Friday night at 7.30, I'll never forget. I used to die every Friday night. <laughs> and I was hired as a, what they called a soubrette in those days. And she used to come on and sing a song with the ballet, sing a couple of choruses and a verse, and then do a routine with all the feathers and the spangled costume and all the rest of it. And I used to appear in the gags with George Wallace, Jr. Mm -hmm. But what were you doing on the TV station as well, apart, as a, apart from that? Wasn't that enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, well, eventually they thought, well, she's got a lot of spare time, we can do something with her. So I became a booth announcer, which was announcing all the commercials and logging all the commercial times in the booth, because they've got machines to do all that now. Mm. We were like machines. We used to have... What's that soundproofing with all the holes in it? Soundproofing. Soundproofing. Yes. That's right. right. Sound yes. Soundproofing. Yes. Soundproofing. Yes. Yes. Just a pretty face. Yeah. I draw. I drew lines. I linked up every hole in the sound booth. I went mad. <laughs> I hosted a children's show, an afternoon children's show. I did an afternoon news bulletin, and I was the weather girl. The weather girl. Mm. And you used to do all this at the same time, did you? Not all at once. No, not no. all at once. I know that. I mean, you go from what one studio to another, changing. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Theatre Royal being live to air on Friday night, came very shortly afterwards, after the weather report. And on a Friday night, I used to get into little Studio B and I'd have all my hair teased up. This was the 60s, of course. Mm. Or remember what we looked like then, terrible. <laughs> and I'd have a, a nice straight suit on with a sort of frilly blouse to cover everything up. And underneath that would be the spangled costume, and those <laughs> high cut numbers, and the mesh stockings and the high heel shoes, the elastic over the top. And I'd do the weather report. <laughs> and I would hair out of that studio, down to the dressing room, take off the suit, rip out the hair, throw on the feathers at the back and thing the, and rush up to Studio A as the curtain was drawing apart. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, oh, like I do get carried away. Yes, sorry, everyone. Uh, it sounds like a recipe. It's for, water. What do you know? It sounds it's like a recipe water. for disaster. Oh, it was sometimes. <laughs> the first night I did it, 
The first night I did Theatre Royal, I forgot the routine. And I was in the front row, so I couldn't watch anybody. I stood there and cried. <laughs> <laughs> In your, in your career, you've had in television, it was 17 years, and you, you say you've been uh, mm. doing it. You've had a couple of, uh, of sort of historical moments, haven't you? I mean, I, I mean Pat, this character that you play now, is, is historical in the sense that it's, it's the first true nasty, you know, the, the one that yes. they love to hit. There was another thing that you did in a, in a thing called You Can't See Around Corners, too, wasn't it? There? there was another historical moment. That scene. The scene. Yes. Hey, what, what, tell us about the scene. Well, it, it was, uh, let me remember, the scene in the park where... Uh, Frankie's off to war, that's right, and it's our last night together. And he wants to make the most of it. But uh, Margie is not of the same mind. And uh, so they sort of wrestle around in the grass for a bit. But unbeknownst to me, the director and Ken Shorter, who played Frankie, had got together in a corner and decided that they would go a little further than we had rehearsed. So he put his hand up my skirt and got a wonderful reaction. Did he? <laughs> it was very real. <laughs> oh, so let's, we've got the clip here. Let's have a look oh, at it now. Come here. This will remind you all our golden old days. Here we go. Look, we probably won't see each other again, maybe for a long time. Don't let's muck it up. before no go on no we weren't well we won't no, <laughs> no let's don't what? talk about step-ins why because we haven't rehearsed it well it doesn't matter <laughs> we haven't rehearsed any of it i mean what's what's, what about, what's about step-ins would it be a, a, a terrific embarrassment to you if i if i press the point i think it might be would it yes. be as big an embarrassment as it was when he pressed the point um <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> all right fine <laughs> Yes. Next question. Well, all right. Well, what kind of reaction did... I mean, that caused a terrible stink sting at the time. Well, it did, and and there was a certain amount of deliberation, of course. Uh, it was the first episode of the series, and, of course, Channel 7, ha, I said it, wanted everybody to watch, and they did. And <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> so it was terrific. It got the series off to a good start. Well, what I was going to say with the Big Bang. <laughs> yes, <that> Big Bang, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the music, the climactic <laughs> yes, music. Yes, it's yes, marvellous. Let me ask the, out. the two of you, what kind of censorship problems have you, have you had? Have you had any censorship problems at all? Well, I've found that in America they're terribly stuffy about oh, yes. things like Yes, that. they are. Mm. I mean, that a little clip with Jack uh, that was there. I, that, I had a green sequin dress. That dress was green. It was in black and white, though, so long ago, uh, which I've worn all over the place. I've worn it in England. I've worn it in Australia. I got to America to do the Jack Benny show and they had put a bit of mesh across there because they you know, didn't want to expose the Rudy Valley. Mm. They're, they're extremely prudish, aren't they? And yet, you, you know, you see scenes of explicit violence there, which, I mean, they're just allowed to go on unchecked. But, I mean, That's they had right. sort of uh, Rudy Valley, as you it's say. It's a silly double standard. It is a silly double standard. I did a, a series called The Rovers, which was a kid show, and I played um, a, a journalist, uh, Rusty. We used to call her Trusty Rusty and, and Hero Bob. And they lived on a, a schooner with uh, the captain and koalas and wombats and cockatoos <laughs> and all sorts of things. Well, they all lived there, but Rusty didn't. She used to appear bright and bubbly every morning, ready to set to right all the wrongs and uh, do all those wonderful things. But we never knew where she went at night. We decided <laughs> she, did, she couldn't live on the boat. That was out of the question. So we figured either she went up the cross every night <laughs> or she lived up the mast <laughs> in the rose nest, sort of permanent lookout. <laughs> <laughs> but there she'd be on deck every morning, ready yeah. to go. One of life's great on mysteries. On her crusade, yes, yeah. we never found out. Yeah. Can I ask the two of you too? I mean, what about the, the both of you from very early age had an ambition to, to make it, and you've both made it. Uh, um, you're both uh, divorced. Um, is that anything to do with the job itself? Is there a pressure on a, on a woman becoming successful, do you think, that uh, makes it difficult to have a, a settled married life? 
Uh, it is a bit hard to get to see the person you'd be living with, I think, <laughs> yes. for a start, you know. Um, I think doing this sort of show, it is very, would be very, very hard on a marriage, but I'm not saying that uh, it would, would wreck it, because that depends on the two individuals. I'm having a lovely time being single. You are? Oh, certainly. I can turn the light out when I like. I can get a, be really selfish. Really? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. Yes. Do you have to learn to be more assertive, Lorraine? I mean, one should be able to turn the light out whenever one wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you turn the light out? <laughs> it never goes on. <laughs> I'm having a lovely time being single. You are. Yeah, but it, it's a difficult job for relationships. It's a difficult job to have a social life with because Certainly is. you really never know when you're going to be free. And uh, it's, it's not just the actual working from seven to seven or yeah. nine to five, whatever it is, during the day, but you get home at night and you, you know, you've really had it, and, but you've got to prepare for the next day and weekends, you have to set time aside. So it's, uh, there's a kind of discipline involved that makes it difficult to yes. just do what you really want to do. Yes. To make an appointment is so yes. hard. Yeah. I mean, I say to people, look, could you ring me next Tuesday and I'll let you know what the schedules are for the week after and I'll let you know how much I've got to learn and what times I am available. You can't really make an appointment for ages ahead, mm -hmm. which is pretty hard on a romantic situation. Yeah, because nobody really understands that no, they either, don't. do they? No. Do, do, do you think, always think you're giving them a line. Do you think, do, just please though, do you think the men are also, when they see the, the character of you, do you think they're a bit frightened of you? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it could well, be I, that? I don't know. I mean, you meet people and they react to you and you accept that. Um, I suppose it could be. I mean, I think it's rather silly, but I suppose that could be an element. Mm. It's worth a try, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. If they send the letters to me, not to you, though. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yes. Rowena Wallace for the moment. Thank you very much indeed. Rowena yes. Wallace. <laughs>